we have to spend money. You're always faced with that dilemma, with that problem. They don't see the threat as, uh, as well as you do s see it. Of course, uh, you know, security traditionally have come out from uh, the military world, you know, the intelligence world. In the 80s or the 70s, most users had no concept of security. Uh, well, uh, in those instances, it's easy to force people to do something. You know, you just do what you're told to do. The rest of the population don't like to do that. Uh, another important aspect, if you, if you remember, when, how do you look for an SSL-enabled website? You look for uh, the lock, right? Uh, and if it's missing, then it's bad. SSL is not there. Uh, one thing that humans do very well is actually detecting positive stimulus, but they're really bad at finding out if something is missing. So if it is there, they'll find it. If it's not there, they won't actually remember to check. So you have to consider that. Of course, it goes without saying, they're not interested in finding how things work. All right. So starting with computers, 70s, 80s, uh, initially users had no concept of security, weren't involved. And over time, that has gotten more and more. Uh, if you remember using DOS, DOS had no security, right? Uh, there were no file permissions, nothing, uh, nothing really related at all to security. Then you moved on to Windows 95, also no security, no login, no, nothing of that nature. Then things have changed a lot. So now every website has a password, uh, every mechanism, every application, you have to log into it. Uh, you have to have all the software package that I talked about on your computer just to have basic security. Okay, uh, here really lies the problem, and this was said in so many different ways in the literature I looked at, is that uh, a lot of the time, instead of trying to fix a problem, a security problem, we're faced with, well, we can't fix this, what do we do? Well, just move the problem, right? Move it to the user. Let the user answer the question. This doesn't solve the problem, it just shifts the problem. Okay, so security complex, Sometimes when you're designing an application, there are certain things that you have to make a decision on. If you, if you consider the operating system, for example, the operating system is always going through a decision tree about what things to allow and what things not to allow. So whatever something, whenever something is happening, the OS will look at the file permissions, the user permissions, uh, policy, and all aspects that are stored and make a decision whether to allow that action to take place or not. Uh, now, this is the way really security works, but in a lot of instances, you don't have enough time at the design time, you don't have enough data actually to make that determination. Uh, for example, if you're trying to download an ActiveX, there's no way ahead of time to know whether that ActiveX is actually a malicious piece of software or not. So you have to wait until it happens and then make the decision at the time. Well, you're not there when the decision has to be made. It's only the user. So we end up really forcing the user to answer the question that we, we couldn't really answer. Now, is the user qualified to make that answer? Not really. They actually have less data than you do. So you understand more about the browser security, ActiveX security, but the user doesn't understand any of that. So why are you asking the question? And this is common, I mean, we always, uh, I'll show you a couple of examples why we have all these answers. Well, I've, I've looked into this and, and the answer to why we keep doing it, it doesn't add much to security and it doesn't really work. Uh, well, we have to do something first. Can you just let it download or not download? Which way do you wanna go? You can't really make that determination. Uh, of course, always in parallel to your software development, product development, there is a lawyer standing by, right? Making sure that to protect the corporate, uh, we are showing reasonableness, you know, due diligence. We did something, we asked the user, we're covered. Uh, how many of you uh, ever read an uh, end user license agreement? <laughs> Two? <laughs> uh, We'd never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in the user license, it's a completely different presentation, but uh, they have a lot of stuff that uh, you would laugh at. Uh, uh, but they really restrict what the user 
uh, rights are. That's the bottom of it. And this whole uh, dialogue box is as part of that. We're making progress, of course. You're the user. You know better than ever anyone else. So you make the decision. We are empowering you, right? <laughs> All right. The other, the last thing is that sometimes the end user isn't the only user. So who in this room actually likes all the bloatware they load on new computers? No one does, but they still do it because there's a revenue stream. So there are other users, other vendors that they benefit from. It took years, for example, for IE to add the functionality of stopping pop-ups and pop-unders, right? Uh, they could have done it a long time ago, but it took them a while because they didn't want to upset someone else. All right, here's the uh, common security dialogue you're faced with, the user faced with all the time. Uh, some characteristics, of course, uh, it's always uncertain. So you're never right, really. Uh, it may or may not happen, so you can't really know. Uh, it's always missing information, so no matter what you do, no matter what you research, there is no way for you to answer. Even if you're qualified, even if you're a security engineer, just not enough information to make that determination. Uh, end users, this is just an annoyance. They don't really read it. They just try to find out which answer is going to get them through it uh, to the next step. A lot of false positives. Is it really valuable? I don't think so. Very costly, because if you consider how many clicks we all have to go through, the population in general, you can imagine how much time we're all wasting on these useless dialog boxes that add nothing, really just reduce security. Uh, now, there's another uh, angle to this, is that users, again, they, uh, they don't have a good handle on how to assess risk, but they are generally optimistic. Uh, so, generally people, when the, let's say you're watching your local news, your evening news, and uh, you see uh, there was an accident today on the intersection you drive through every day. Most users will not think that that might happen to them next day, right? Which it might. Most users think, oh, this is going to happen to the others. So this phenomenon is called optimism bias. Makes it really difficult for users to imagine, well, something may happen to you too. Uh, so they ignore these uh, dialogue boxes. Users also can't tell which ones are security related, which ones are not. Everything looks the same. All right, let me show you a couple of examples. You got a new computer, you started your computer. Again, I'm focusing on the browser. The browser is the number one application, and IE is the number one browser by market share. Uh, but again, this is not unique to Windows or IE. Uh, you get this message. This is really asking you, do you want to ever use the internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would say this, no to this, right? Uh, but if you read it, then you wonder, well, if you send information into it, it might be possible for others to see that information. But you wonder, as a user, you may think, well, this is actually exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to send an email, post a comment, uh, you know, post my pictures. Why is this is a problem? They don't really specify uh, who the others are or why you should actually care. All right, here's uh, the life equivalent.